Hey everybody, welcome back. Carl Briggs uh, 73 Live on YouTube. Uh, today's topic is his story uh, part two. And uh, this topic, as you seen, uh, his story part one was basically about the social injustices that go on, right? And one of the things that I had to learn growing up uh, was my history, right? And I didn't learn uh, about history until I actually went to prison, okay? And it started, it actually started with uh, my father, right? My father, right? Not having my father in the home or male figures who are not historically inclined is because they too have the same education that I have, right? And also the same information that was given in school, right? Which wasn't much. And so you go through, through life uh, uh, having self-esteem problems because in my eyes, I felt like I wasn't nothing. You know, I felt like a black man didn't have a place. I felt like I was only a slave as well as my, my, my friends that was other races because they learned the same history too, right? But then as I got older and I started to learn history, I started to learn that, wait a minute, people aren't teaching the right thing in schools. And it was based on that, right? And so we want to attack the real and address the real issues uh, uh, that's going on so we can change these endeavors about bad policing skills, right? Bad interactions socially with amongst the people, right? We're talking Latinos, whites, blacks, Asian. The only way we're going to be able to get along if the truth is manifested through history. So uh, today, my fans, I just wanted to drop a jewel on you. And it was written uh, by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This book I've had for years, right? If you notice, the cover is gone. So this is the actual book. It's called Black Profiles. Uh, uh, encourage a legacy of uh, African American achievement, right? And it was written by the basketball player Kareem Abdul Jabbar, and he's one of my favorite authors. So let me just read you a couple inserts from the book, and uh, we'll go from there. Give me one second. Hmm. Okay. Right here. I'm going to start right here. And as you can see, I need to put my reading glasses on and take my Hollywood stunners off, right? Because I need to see these words. My eyes are getting bad. I'm getting older. Okay. And uh, I, I have to read. So this is scripted today a bit. And it's not from my words. It's from actually Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And for the people that I reach out to, that's everyone, all my fans. And I hope that I can enlighten you in such. So... This uh, the, is chapter one exploration, and it's about Estevinko. Now, Estevinko was a black man. Now, we're talking about uh, blacks being in uh, prehistoric Americas way, way before slavery, right? Way before the Mayflower. And uh, Kareem goes on to say, he says, when you think of, a, 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 of the great explorers, who comes to mind? Marco Polo, Columbus, Magellan, Drake, Balboa, Coronado, uh, De Soto, uh, Ponce de Leon, uh, Cortez, maybe a few others. No one thinks of Estevinco, right? Yeah, Estevinco was one of a kind. Uh, he was the first black person mentioned by the name of American history. The only black in the first party to cross the North America uh, American cont continent. The first non-Indian to discover the old world Southwest, right? The first to set foot in Arizona and New Mexico. His courage and ingenuity opened the Southwest to civilization. So Estevinco wasn't just an explorer. He was a pioneer, right? But bring, uh, bring up this subject uh, and people look at you funny. Uh, black explorers, right? This is what he goes on to say with a question mark. Uh, what are you talking about? Question mark. The idea of black people involved in the discovery of the continent is still shocking news to most white people, right? And not to bring out uh, race, but we have to address these issues to become, so we can be, have social equality, right? And so we have to address uh, truth. So our peoples, right, and your peoples, right, can cater into self-esteem going up, collaboration, and collective endeavors. Uh, he said, he goes on to say, before I ever heard of Estevinko, I was intrigued by the idea of an African presence in the Americas, pre-Columbus. 
In history class as a kid, we got very little about blacks, period, right? But I do remember being taught that the first blacks in America came to Jamestown as slaves in 1619, right? That is still taught in schools today, and it's totally false, right? That is still taught in schools today, and it's totally false, right? I did not find out, though, until I started investigating uh, the truth on my own. My first step was reading uh, two books recommended by a friend. They came before Columbus, an African presence in early America, Professor Ivan Van Satima, right? A pioneer in linguistics, linguistics and anthropology, wrote the first and edited the second. When I read them, I was galvanized by the material that I started looking for someone to argue with. I tried to get people to say something ignorant uh, that was generally assumed to be true. And then I referred to Van Satima's book. Did you know this and this and this? They couldn't refute it. Where did you get that? I never heard that before, right? The information hit them like revelations. One reason is the continued presumption of white supremacy on the continent, right? This belief that black people have no legitimacy here because they were brought over as slaves by superior cultures. African Americans have never escaped the stigma of inferior, uh, inferiority uh, perpetuated by this myth. And we know now that that is a myth, right? That's why it is so important for both blacks and whites to learn the truth that black people were not only an early presence on the continent, they actually preceded whites by at least 2,500 years. All those early uh, visitors came freely on their own. So I'll stop right there uh, just to give you guys a little bit here and there. Right, uh, this is all actual factual, right? These are scholars, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, shout out, Laker fan for sure. But man, the school of thought, learn your history because it was more to Kareem than just basketball, right? And I thank him. I thank him for giving me the opportunity, right? I thank him for giving me the opportunity to raise my self-esteem up, right? Uh, this is his story, uh, part, uh, part two. Uh, what is truth, you know, and... This is the only way, people, this is the only way that we can coexist together, right, and move move forward in harmonious respondents versus resistance. The world has had enough, right? We talking Emmett Till, right? We talking Malcolm X, right? We talking Martin Luther King, right? And there, so on and so forth. However, I'll leave you with a jewel as well. It wasn't just blacks that suffered in the endeavor of hate. There were whites that helped us along the way, Right. And I thank them. Right. And they're never mentioned and they're never mentioned because of this thing called hate. We are no longer hating, but moving forward and educating our peoples. Right. Let's start educating our peoples. Hold on. Let me put my Hollywoods back on. Now we're going to start educating our peoples moving forward, man. We're talking moving forward with strength. It's time for us as blacks in these communities, man, and as whites, Latinos, and so forth, etc., right, to start engaging in conversations that's healthy, engaging in truth, right, engaging in these historical artifacts so we can build better community, so we can set proper and healthy boundaries, so we can collectively, socially interact, right, without resistance, right? And it's time, right? Let's start networking, right? Let's start network and give up my people's an opportunity right listen listen the true right reparation right right to the black man right in america is the truth it's the truth man your monies can't help me your monies can't help me but keep me self-destructing and self-medicating, right? The truth is you coming forth, right, as a people, man, and let's sit at the round table and say, hey, we got it wrong. We all did. We all made mistakes. I was talking to a friend today, right, and he had he had validation in, in, in his arguments. However, I do not believe that violence is going to solve 
is going to solve, right? It does solve and cure the flesh. But what it does not solve is legacy, right? What are we leaving behind, people, right? What are we teaching our kids, right? You mean to tell me we have a diverse setting and our kids can't even get along or even understand each other? Culture is beautiful. How else can we have experience? So with that said, tune in. There's much, much more. Part three soon to come. Me and the brother Shay, we dropping jewels, right? You know what my show is about. I have no uh, demographic. Er it's good. It's all open, man. This is a platform. Hey, hit me up. If you got a problem with what I said, it's all love, right? It's all love. But hey, I have to drop jewels uh, from a from a from an honest perspective. My shows aren't scripted, right? I've done the work. I've done the research, right? Um, and if I'm wrong, hey, call me on it. Let's sit down, man. Let's debate, right? And let's have a healthy debate. Let's respect boundaries. Let's respect culture. Because if I just ate soul food all my life, how could I appreci appreciate Asian food, right? If you just ate American food all the time, how could you appreciate the beautiful thing of Belizean and Jamaican and French and Greek, right? Come on, people.